Good morning. I'm Debbie Ridgel. Come join me for morning prayer. Today is Friday, September 23rd. Thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with him who is of contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not at concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, especially when we come together in his presence, and give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hand to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Invitatory. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Venite, O come. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your, your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works." Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore to in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. O come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Give ear unto my prayer. For the ends of the earth I will call upon you, when my heart is in heaviness. O set me upon the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge and a strong tower for me against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tabernacle forever, and my refuge shall be under the covering of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows and have given a heritage to those who fear your name. You shall grant the king of long life that his years may endure throughout all generations. His throne shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare your loving mercy and faithfulness, that they may preserve him. So will I always sing praise unto your name, that I may daily perform my vows. Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. For him, from him comes my salvation. He truly is my strength and my salvation. He is my defense, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail a man to crush him, all of you together, as if you were tottering a tottering wall or a broken fence? 
Their plan is only to bring down the one whom God has exalted. Their delight is in lies. They bless with their mouth, but curse with their hearts. Nevertheless, for God alone, my soul in silence waits, for my hope is in him. He truly is my strength and my salvation. He is my defense so that I shall not fall. And God is my help and my glory. He is the rock of my might and in him in my trust. Oh, put your trust in him always, you people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our hope. As for the children of men, they are but a breath. The children of men are deceitful. Upon the scales they are together, altogether lighter than a breath. O trust not in oppression, but not vain hopes in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. One thing has God spoken. Indeed, two things have I heard him say. That power belongs to our God, and that you, O Lord, are merciful. For you reward everyone according to his work. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Kings, beginning with the 13th chapter, the first verse. And behold, a man of God came out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel. Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make offerings. And the man cried against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who make offerings on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign that the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down, and the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. And when the king heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar at Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him. And his hand, which he stretched out against him, dried up, so that he could not draw it back to himself. The altar also was torn down, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king said to the man of God, Entreat now the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me. And the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself. I will give you a reward. And the man of God said to the king, If you give me half your house, I will not go in with you, and I will not eat bread or drink water in this place. For so was it commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall neither eat bread nor drink water nor return by the way that you came." So he went another way and did not return by the way that he had came to Bethel. Now an old prophet lived in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told to their father the words that he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, <coughs> I'm sorry. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? And his sons showed him the way that the man of God who came from Judah had gone. And he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he mounted it. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with you or go in with you, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, you shall neither eat bread nor drink water there nor return by the way that you came. And he said to him, I also am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you into the house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. And as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried to the man of God who came from Judah, 
Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord, you have not kept the command that the Lord your God commanded you, but have come back and have eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which he said to you, eat no bread and drink no water. Your body shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. And after he had eaten bread and drunk, he saddled the donkey for the prophet whom he had brought back. And as he went away, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was thrown in the road, and the donkey stood beside it. The lion also stood beside the body. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown in the road, and the lion standing next to the body. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. After this thing, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way but made priests for the high places again from among all the people. Any who would, he ordained to be priests of the high places. And this thing became sin into the house of Jeroboam, so as to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Te Deum Laudamus. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and the seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise. And the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you look our flesh to... When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at the right God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to judge, be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we have put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. Our second lesson is a reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews, beginning with the twelfth chapter, the first verse. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. You have not, and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipl dis discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not disciple? If you are left without disciples in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best for them. But his disciple discipline, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. For the moment, all dis discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. 
but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many people defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins and tender in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, you have taught us that without love... All our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Endurance Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory, but he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, <clears throat> your Son our Lord. Amen. 
a colic for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. In time of great sickness and mortality, O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee to you for comfort. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto the heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who serve others. O O Lord, our Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be served, but to serve, we ask you to bless all who, following in his steps, give themselves to the service of others, especially those who are laboring in this time of plague. Endure them with wisdom, patience, and courage, that they may strengthen the weak and raise up those who fall, and being inspired by your love, may worthily minister to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy, for the sake of him who laid down his life for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I invite you to add your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings. Lord, we lift up those on our parish prayer list, Glenn, Joy, John, Natalie, Rachel, Robin, Koa, Angela, Pearl, Linda, Nikki, Blake, Anne-Marie, Rocco, and Lamar. And Lord, we pray for the repose of Matthew. We ask that you be with his family in this time of grief and loss, Lord, that you strengthen them and help them to feel your presence. Lord, we ask you to be with our parishes that are moving out of their properties, Lord, and some that are in negotiations. Lord, we pray that you would bless that negotiation time, Lord, and that through all of this, you would help each parish, each congregation, each parishioner feel your presence, Lord, and feel your guidance and hear your word, Lord. We pray for the New Wineskins Global Missions Conference and all its participants. And Lord, we pray that you would bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, by the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and evermore. Amen. This concludes morning prayer. We pray that you would uh, be able to join us on Sunday morning um, for the Holy Eucharist, either uh, present at uh, Holy Cross or online. It will be streamed beginning at 10 a.m. Have a blessed and wonderful weekend. God's peace.